Hello, and a warm welcome to all as we resume our exploration of the introductory module on organometallics. Today's lecture will delve deeper into the fundamentals of metal ligand bonding. We will also dedicate a significant portion of our time to exploring ligand classification, the various modes of ligand binding to metals, and intriguing concepts like hapticity. The transition series is formed by the systematic filling of the D shell, which in transition metals is of lower energy than the next S and P levels. Thus, transition metals have partially filled D orbitals and vacant S and P orbitals. In contrast, most of the ligands have filled SP hybrid orbitals and, for unsaturated organic ligands, vacant antibonding pi orbitals. Importantly, the D orbitals on the metal have similar symmetry and energy to the ligand's sp hybrid orbitals. Most ligands are Lewis bases and thus typically neutral or anionic, rarely cationic. Anionic ligands, often represented as X, form polar covalent metal ligand bonds. Among neutral ligands, often denoted L, we find lone pair donors, such as carbon monoxide or phosphenes, pi donors such as orins, and sigma donors such as hydrogen gas. Transition metals participate in two types of bonding, often simultaneously. Sigma bonds are formed by the overlap of filled sp hybrid orbitals on the ligand with vacant dsp hybrid orbitals on the metal. Ligands that are primarily lone pair donors, such as phosphenes, amines, hydride, and carbanions, increase the electron density on the metal. These ligands fill one coordination site through one point of attachment and are called monohapto ligands, designated as eta-1, which shows the number of adjacent ligand atoms directly bound to the metal. Unsaturated organic ligands, such as alkenes, alkynes, orins, carbon monoxide, and isonitriles, which have pi antibonding orbitals, bond somewhat differently. They, too, form sigma bonds by overlap of their filled pi bonding orbitals with the vacant DSP hybrid orbitals of the metal. In addition, filled D orbitals of the metal can overlap with the vacant pi antibonding orbital of the ligand, back donating electron density from the metal to the ligand. It may seem paradoxical that an antibonding orbital can form a bond, but this orbital is only antibonding with respect to carbon atoms in the unsaturated organic ligand and can still be bonding with respect to the coordinating metal. In other words, unsaturated organic ligands can act as pi acceptors or pi acids, decreasing electron density on the metal. Because of these two modes of bonding, sigma donation and pi accepting or back bonding, metals can act as an electron sink for ligands, either supplying or accepting electron density. Therefore, the electron density on the metal, and hence its reactivity, can be modulated by varying the ligands around the metal. This offers a major method for fine-tuning the reactivity of organometallic reagents. Here you should remember that on the metal side, back bonding can only happen if the metal has electrons in the D orbitals. D0 ions, such as titanium-4 salts, cannot back bond and very seldom form stable complexes with strong pi acceptor ligands. There are two modes of pi back bonding and two types of pi acceptor ligands, longitudinal acceptors, such as carbon monoxide, isonitriles, and linear nitrosyls, and perpendicular acceptors, such as alkenes, alkynes, and orins. There is ample physical evidence for pi back bonding with good pi acceptor ligands. Carbon monoxide, which always acts as an acceptor, experiences a lengthening of the carbon-oxygen bond and a decrease in carbon-oxygen stretching frequency in the infrared spectrum upon complexation. This is a good indication of the population of a pi antibonding orbital on carbon monoxide, decreasing the carbon-oxygen bond order. The situation is a little more complex with alkenes. With electrophilic metals, such as palladium-2 or platinum-2, alkenes are primarily lone pair donors and the carbon-carbon double bond length in such complexes is virtually the same as for the free alkene. With electron-rich metals, such as palladium-0, substantial back bonding results, the alkene-carbon-carbon bond is lengthened, and the hybridization at the alkaneic carbons changes towards sp3. The degree of pi back bonding has a serious effect on the reactivity of pi acceptor ligands, which will be described later. By back bonding, the metal can get rid of some of its excess electron density and delocalize it over the pi acid ligands. In tungsten hexacarbonyl, back bonding is so effective that the compound is air stable and relatively unreactive. The carbon monoxide ligands have so stabilized the metal electrons that they have no tendency to be abstracted by an oxidant such as air. In hexatrimethylphosphine tungsten complex, in contrast, back bonding is negligible 
and the complex is reactive and air-sensitive. The d orbitals of transition metals are only fully available for back donation in low oxidation states. Although cobalt-3 does have a filled d orbitals, it is unavailable for back bonding. Cobalt-3 therefore cannot bind carbon monoxide. The high positive charge of cobalt-3 contracts all the orbitals with the result that the d orbital is low in energy and therefore cannot support back bonding. Ligands such as alkoxide and fluoride are pi donors because of the lone pairs that are left after one lone pair has formed the metal ligand sigma bond. Instead of stabilizing the d electrons of an octahedral ion as does a pi acceptor ligand, pi donor ligands now destabilize d electrons by what is effectively a repulsion between two filled orbitals. In sharp contrast, if the metal has empty d orbitals, as in the d0 ion titanium 4, Pi donation from the pi donor ligand to the metal empty d orbitals now leads to stronger metal ligand bonding. D0 metals therefore form particularly strong bonds with pi donor ligands. For the sigma donor hydrogen gas, the metal ligand bond is formed via donation from the hydrogen hydrogen sigma orbital to the metal d orbital. This interaction is accompanied by back donation from the filled d orbital of metal into the hydrogen hydrogen sigma antibonding orbital as it is shown by arrows with numbering 4. Sidon bonding of sigma and pi donors results in short bonding distances to two adjacent ligand atoms. This type of bonding is represented as eta 2. For sigma donors, such as hydrogen gas, forming the metal ligand sigma bond partially depletes the hydrogen hydrogen sigma bond as electrons that were fully engaged in keeping the two hydrogen atoms together in free hydrogen gas are now also delocalized over the metal. Back bonding into the hydrogen hydrogen sigma anti bonding orbital causes additional weakening or even breaking of the hydrogen hydrogen sigma bond. In case of strong back bonding, the hydrogen hydrogen bond breaks and a dihydride is formed. This is the oxidative addition reaction, which will be described in detail in the following module. Formation of a sigma complex can be thought of as an incomplete oxidative addition, where only the addition part has occurred. This table classifies common ligands by the nature of the metal ligand bonds. Both lone pair and pi donors bind side onto metals when they act as ligands. Hydrogen gas and alkane CH bonds behave similarly. Note that Lewis acids such as boron trifluoride and molecules like carbon dioxide can be ligands by only accepting an electron pair from the metal. In such a case, the ligand contributes nothing to the metal electron count. We saw that phosphines and carbon monoxide fill one coordination site through one point of attachment and are called monohapto ligands, designated as eta-1. The allyl group can act as a monohapto, two-electron donor, or a trihapto, four-electron donor ligand. In the latter case, two coordination sites are filled, and all three carbons are bonded to the metal, but the ligand as a whole is still a formal monoanion. The cyclopentadienyl ligand most commonly bonds in an eta-5 fashion, filling three coordination sites and acting as a six-electron donor, although eta-3 and eta-1 coordinations are known. Now we should briefly discuss the relation between periodic trends and bonding and transition metal complexes. The orbital energies fall as we go from left to right in the transition series. For each step to the right, a proton is added to the nucleus, thus providing an extra positive charge that stabilizes all the orbitals. The earlier metals are more electropositive because it is easier to remove electrons from their less stable orbitals. The sensitivity of the orbitals to this change is as it is shown here. The s orbital, having a maximum electron density at the nucleus, is more stabilized by the added protons than are the p and d orbitals, with a planar node at the nucleus. The special property of the transition metals is that all three types of orbitals are in the valence shell with similar energies, so all contribute significantly to the bonding. Metal carbonyls, for example, are most stable for groups 4 to 8 because carbon monoxide requires back bonding to bind strongly and in the later groups, the needed d orbitals become too stable to be effective. Organometallic compounds of the electropositive early metals have a higher polar covalent character than in the later metals and thus tend to be more air sensitive because they are more subjected both to oxidation by oxygen and hydrolysis by water. Finally, as we go down a given group in the D block from the first to the second row, the outer valence electrons become more shielded from the nucleus by the extra shell of electrons added. They are therefore more easily lost, making the heavier D block element more basic and more capable of attaining high oxidation states. Ligands may be hard or soft depending on their propensity for ionic or covalent bonding. Likewise, metals can also be hard or soft. 
The favored, well-matched combinations are a hard ligand with a hard metal and a soft ligand with a soft metal. Hard-soft combinations are disfavored because of the mismatch of bonding preferences. Early transition metals behave like hard Lewis acids and interact well with hard ligands, while metals from groups 8 to 11 are soft metals and interact well with soft ligands. This has many similarities with the hard-soft acid-base principles and following a similar logic one can say that ligands based on polarizable period 3 or higher p-block elements are soft. A good example of a soft ligand are phosphenes. This table shows formation constants for different metal ion halide ligand combinations, where large positive numbers reflect strong bonding. The hardest halide is fluoride because it is small, difficult to polarize, and forms predominantly ionic bonds. It binds best to a hard cation. Iodide is the softest halide because it is large, easy to polarize, and forms predominantly covalent bonds. It binds best to a soft cation mercury too, which is large and easy to polarize. In this context, high polarizability means that electrons from each partner readily engage in covalent bonding. Organometallic chemistry is dominated by soft-soft interactions as in metal carbonyl, alkene, and arene complexes, while traditional coordination chemistry involves harder metals and ligands. Ligands that have a donor atom with more than one lone pair can often donate one pair to each of two or more metal ions to give polynuclear complexes such as this ruthenium complex where L is a phosphine ligand. The bridging group is represented by the Greek letter mu. In particular, this denuclear complex consists of two octahedra sharing a face containing three chloride bridges. Ligands with more than one donor atom, such as ethylene diamine, abbreviated as in, can donate both lone pairs to form a chelate ring. The most favorable ring size is five, but six-membered metallocycles are also often seen. Chelating ligands are much less easily displaced from a complex than are comparable monodentate ligands for the reason illustrated in this equation. When the reactants release six molecules of ammonia, the total number of particles increases from four to seven. This creates entropy and so favors the chelate. Equilibrium constants for complex formation are usually called formation constants. The higher the value of the formation constant, the more stable the complex. Chelate ligands can also be polydentate, as in these tridentate and hexadentate ligands. Tridentate ligands are also termed pincer ligands, a type attracting much recent attention. Ethylene diamine tetracetic acid, alternatively known as EDTA, can take up all six sites of an octahedron and thus completely wrap up many different metal ions. As a common food preservative, EDTA binds free metal ions so that they can no longer catalyze aerial oxidation of the foodstuff. Remember, Reactivity in metal complexes usually requires the availability of open sites or at least label sites at the metal. Alternate types of electron pair are sometimes available for bonding. For example, aldehydes have both a carbon-oxygen pi bond and oxygen lone pairs. As pi bond donors, aldehydes bind side on like ethylene, but as lone pair donors, they can alternatively bind end on. Thiocyanate can bind via nitrogen in a linear fashion or via sulfur, in which case the ligand is bent. In some cases, both forms are isolable. In the osmium-2 complex shown here, osmium is a very strong pi donor as osmium-2 is soft and the L-type ligand on it is not a pi acceptor. The pi basic osmium thus prefers to bind to the pi acceptor aromatic carbon-carbon double bonds of aniline, not to the nitrogen. Oxidation to osmium-3 causes a sharp falloff in pi donor power because the extra positive charge stabilizes the d orbitals and the osmium-3 complex slowly rearranges to the inbound aniline form. This illustrates how the electronic character of a metal can be altered by changing the ligand set and oxidation state. Soft osmium-2 binds to the soft carbon-carbon double bonds and hard osmium-3 binds to the hard amino group. Actor ligands associate, dissociate, or react in some way. They are particularly important in catalytic reactions, when they bind to the metal and engage in reactions that lead to release of a product molecule. In hydrogenation, for example, hydrogen gas can associate to the catalyst that go through a cycle of reactions that leads to release of the hydrogenation product. Spectator ligands remain unchanged during chemical transformations but still play an important role by tuning the properties of the metal to enhance desired characteristics. For example, cyclopentadienyl fragment of this iron-based catalyst remains intact. It is a spectator ligand and imparts solubility, stabilize iron II intermediates, and influence the electronic and steric properties of the complex. It is an art to pick suitable spectator ligand sets to elicit desired properties.
Apparently small changes in ligand can entirely change the chemistry. For example, triphenylphosphine is an exceptionally useful ligand, while the similar triphenylamine, triphenylbismuth, and trispinafluorophenylphosphine are of very little use. The hard indonor triphenylamine is very different from triphenylphosphine. While the bismuth phenyl bond is too easily cleaved for triphenylbismuth to be a reliable spectator, and the electron withdrawing pinafluorophenyl substituents of trispinafluorophenylphosphine completely deactivate the phosphorus lone pair. Actor ligands may allow isolation of a stable material as a precursor to a reactive species only formed after departure of the actor, that species either being too reactive to isolate or not otherwise easily accessible. A classic example is chelating 1,5-cyclooctadiene that binds to rhodium-1 or iridium-1 hydrogenation catalysts. Under hydrogen gas, the cyclooctadiene is hydrogenated to free cyclooctane, liberating the active catalyst. Now let's consider platinum-2 complexes. These are four coordinate and adopt a square planar geometry, as it is shown here. Platinum-2 complexes can react with incoming ligands to replace an existing ligand in a substitution reaction. Where a choice exists between two possible geometries of the product, as in these equations, the outcome is governed by so-called trans effect. For example, in the second step of the first equation, the ammonia does not replace the chloride trans to ammonia, but only the chloride trans to chloride. This observation means that chloride is a higher trans effect ligand than ammonia. In the second equation, once again, the ammonia trans to chloride is displaced, not the one trans to ammonia, which leads to the formation of the opposite isomer of cisplatin. Ligands that are more effective at labelizing a ligand trans to themselves have a higher trans effect. The effect is very marked for platinum-2 complexes, and the highest trans effect ligands either form strong sigma bonds, such as hydride and alkyl anions, or are strong pi acceptors, like carbon monoxide and olefins. Ligands based on polarizable period 3 or higher p-block elements, such as phosphines and molecules containing sulfur, also demonstrate a pronounced trans effect. High trans effect ligands also lengthen and weaken trans metal ligand bonds. This can be monitored in X-ray crystallography or in nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy by a decrease in the metal ligand coupling. A trans effect series for a typical platinum-2 system is given here. The order can change somewhat for different metals and oxidation states. To summarize, in this lecture, you have gained insight into the fundamentals of ligand classification and the intricacies of metal ligand bonding. We have explored the intriguing concept of backbonding and its impact on the stability of metal complexes. Our journey has also taken us through the distinct characteristics of pi donor and sigma donor ligands, shedding light on the metals that readily bound with them. Our discussion extended to ligand classification, considering hapticity, collation capabilities, bridging potential, in their roles in catalysis. We have also scrutinized the hard-soft acid base principles and their significance in coordination chemistry. Lastly, you have been introduced to ligands with a higher trans effect, facilitating substitution reactions within metal complexes. Our next lecture will delve into the 18-electron rule and valence electron counting and transition metal complexes. Thank you for your engagement.